All right, I must have walked right past this. This is a witch's circle, and there is... That's a coven witch, and that's a bad witch. Hello and welcome to another episode of Regrowth Reloaded. Okay, so today we're going to go on a little bit of an adventure. But before we do that, I kind of want to show you a couple of things that I've been working on between episodes. First of all, let's come over here and you see that there's a couple more tanks over here. Now I've set these up in preparation for the, um, the thermal evaporator that we're going to be setting up um, probably in the next episode. I just need to make sure uh, one thing that we don't need the actual um, uh, solar generators that are usually put on top of it. I don't think they're required in this pack. But we need two tanks. One of them is going to store the brine that gets created in there. And then you pump the brine back into it afterwards and that creates your lithium and that's what the other tank is for. So I've just kind of made those and set them up. You know, we made tanks before so you didn't miss out on anything there. And I just kind of set up the area here where I'm going to build that. Now, um, the next thing you might see here is that I have um, gotten rid of the uh, wooden engines that we were using on the pumps and also on the, uh, the steam boilers and whatnot. Uh, and I just replaced all of that with these um, ultimate universal cables. And I will show you how to make them. So it's a basic universal cable that gets upgraded all the way up to ultimate. It's they're fairly inexpensive to create. So I just piping some power directly into the pump so that that pumps and fills up our water tank. Um, and then did the same thing over here. So I, I just put in these ultimate mechanical pipes, which I will show you how to make. Again, they're fairly inexpensive to do. They don't require any type of engine to pump them. You just put it, put this side into pull mode. And then uh, the other end you put into push mode. So it pulls it from the tank and pushes it into this tank here. And then I did the same thing here. And this one is just an advanced mechanical pipe. It doesn't need the ultimate uh, to keep this thing filled up. So that's just one step up from basic. Same thing, pull and push. Now, over here, our steam engines have been um, doubled. I now have eight steam engines. Two of them aren't running for some reason. They probably don't need to be uh, creating any energy or something at the moment, I don't know. Um, but, anyways. I redid this too. So we have the um, advanced mechanical pipe coming out of here that goes down the center and it pumps into all of these. Oh god, these two aren't configured, that's why. But let me show you that real quick. So let me jump up here, see if I can get on top of this thing. Okay, so we want to put this, these are configurator. Into push. Oh, that one's going. There we go. So it's pulling the steam out of there and it's pushing it into all eight of these engines. Now, when they are fully running, this thing is actually doing much better than it was with the built craft pipes because uh, I can run all eight of these engines at full steam. You see that each of these engines is creating a full 80 RF a tick when they are up to full power. These two are just now starting up, so they're not quite there yet. So that would give us uh, three or 640 RF per tick that's being generated here. Uh, now these heat ones, if you look at that, well, let's see, they're 
maxed out at 64,000 RF. That's what they store. But these things really only generate like one and a half RF per tick, a little less than that actually. So they, they're not doing an awful lot, but you know, they're there. We've already built them. May as well get the free RF out of them because it's just passive uh, drawing it the heat from there. So that's what I've done over on this side to prep things up. Um, all the cables have been replaced here again with ultimate universal cables going into our um, ultimate energy cube that's storing 51.2 million RF. All the cabling underground has also been uh, updated with that same stuff, as well as another line that goes this way across and goes straight down into our storage area. And because I'm thinking about moving some of our machinery down that way, and we're going to need power in that area anyways, once we start building up our ME system. So that's that. Let me show you the recipes to make these different types of cables. So first things first, um, let me eat real quick. All right. So if we come in here, we've got our basic recipes for our um, basic universal cable is two steel ingots and a piece of redstone. And then you upgrade it with enriched alloy. And then you upgrade that one with reinforced alloy. And then you upgrade that one with atomic alloy. So let's just do that real quick. I've got enough here to make one set of eight of those. So we come here and we're just going to do the two steel ingots with the redstone in the center. That gives us eight basic universal cables. Now if we take our first level, which is our enriched alloy, and we put that in the middle and we surround it by eight of these, that will give us eight advanced universal cables. Same thing with reinforced alloys. This should give us elite universal cables and then last time with the atomic alloy will give us the ultimate universal cables there we go i just got some in here so let me just toss these in here with the rest of these okay same thing we're going to do now with the, the these things here so this is two steel ingots and a bucket and we're doing the same upgrades on it. And I believe this is the mechanical pipes. So let's do that. We're going to take our two steel ingots, a bucket, and that gives us eight basic mechanical pipes. Put those around like this. We put the enriched alloy, advanced mechanical pipes. Reinforced gives us the elite. And then finally, again, atomic alloy gives you the ultimate mechanical pipes. And these are what are being used to uh, push the water and the steam and whatnot. So let's go ahead and put those in here. And then we got one more set of pipes that I'm using in a few areas. Um, and or we will be using, I should say. I'm not using them yet. This is a mechanical pipe. I just using it to pump the lava into our furnace here. Okay, so this one is the um, logistical transporter, which moves items. So let's go ahead and make that, and it's the same kind of deal. So it is two steel ingots with the basic control circuit, gives us eight basic logistical transporter pipes. So same thing, put them in a circle, surround that, that gives us three advanced. With the reinforce, that gives us the elite. One more time with the atomic alloy, gives us the ultimate logistical transporter. And these, again, like I say, are used to pull items. So we could, if we wanted to, go in and replace all of our, our, our transport pipes that we are using from Buildcraft that are under the farm here and anywhere with these and they will work without any type of engine or autarctic gate or anything like that to do the job. So that is that. So the next thing I want to do 
is I want to craft a little bit more of a power thing. And what I want to do, let me show you this real quick. So if we come in here and I'm going to look up wind generators, which is right here. Now these are uh, mechanism generators that uh, will, well, basically they're giant windmills. Um, now these work better when you build them up higher. So you're going to get the most performance out of it if you were to build it, say, at, at build limit, you know, up a 256 block height limit. Um, that's going to be the maximum it could do. Uh, the lower down, it's a little less efficient. But for what we're doing, I think it's going to be fine if I just put them on the ground over there. But we're not going to do that today. I'm just going to go ahead and build them, and then I will get them placed at some other point. So these are two sheets of aluminum one reinforced alloy, which we know how to make, elite control circuits, which we know how to make, energy tablets, which we know how to make, and, four, and two sheets of titanium, which we know how to make. So I've got enough stuff here to go ahead and make four of these. Let's go ahead and grab this. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go ahead and just do this, shift click, and it didn't work. So what am I missing? Two sheets of aluminum. Reinforced. Do I not have those? Okay. One, two, three, four. Let me go ahead and do that. Let's try this again. Just click. There we go. One, up oh, because of the. Yeah, it's because of the um, energy tablets can only go in one at a time. Three. And it's three. Two. Three. And four. And these don't stack either. No, they don't. Okay, and that is not a quest item. These are just um, something that I want to build and we're going to place out there and hook it into our power system just to give us a little bit of extra power. So let me go ahead and just put them in here for the time being. This is the stuff I'm getting ready to do, that other piece that we were going to do with the, oh, what was that? That was in chapter 14 here. Uh, the induction storage that requires lithium. Well, we've got to go through that whole process with the thermal evaporation tank in order to create the lithium that we're going to need to do that. Okay, I have another item I want to build. Now, um, I was going to originally do this for our um, journey, and then I built one, made this in um, another world just to see how they worked and they kind of suck. But we're going to build it anyways, just to kind of show you that real quick. So what I'm going to do is we're going to come in here, and we're going to be looking for traveler's boots. So we come in here, there's traveler's boots, which are six leather, two string, and an aluminum ingot. So if we go ahead and craft those, and we got that. Now if we take these, and we combine them with two lily pads, I think it's... Let me see. How was that done? Traveler's boots. Anyways, it you combine them with lily pads, then it um, makes them so you can walk on water. The problem is, is that you walk real slow. Let me see if I can um, find how to do this again, and I'll be right back with you. All right, so. Here's how you do it. You got to go into the tool forge with it. You're going to put it in here. And you're going to put your lily pads there. And it makes traveler's boots with the water walking ability on them. Now, let me go ahead and put these on. Just kind of show it to you real quick. Now, they might be able to speed these up a little bit, but uh, they didn't work very well for me. I mean, I think you could swim faster than, than they could actually walk in these things. But let's come down here. 
And if we just see, so you can kind of walk across the water like this. You can stand on it, but it's really slow. So I don't know if they are worthwhile to you to ever invest in. You, you might again, you might be able to speed them up with some other um, type of, of enhancements, but. I think we're just going to stick with this and I'll carry them with us in case we need them. All right, so we are on the next day and I want to get started on this quest. So we have a bunch of maps. There was three of them and let me see if I can find the chapter that this was in. Uh, so let's look in here. Um, was it this one? No this one here, what the world teaches. So we got these mysterious map one, mysterious map two, and mysterious map three. Uh, so this says, um, seems that a particular monster dropped a curious piece of paper, which appears to be a map. Might be worthwhile to see where it leads. Uh, so this map seems to lead to somewhere in the vicinity of 750 by 1100, go check it out. Uh, so this says 762, 65, and 1128. So, Let's um, do it this way. Let me write this down real quick. 762. Y is 65 and Z is 1128. All right. And then I guess you gotta do something when you get there. And that gives us eight experience drops. So. We've got that, so let's um, do it this way. Um, now, you could, if you wanted to, take your almanac and use that. If you're not using the the um, journey map that I'm using in here and you're just playing this more along the vanilla line, or kind of vanilla lines, the, the traditional um, way that the pack was um, put together without the journey map and all the extra add-ins that I put in here, uh, you would probably use your your uh, uh, almanac here. Is it in here? Is it in this one? The atlas. So you come in here. Let's open the atlas up. You would uh, make sure you have waypoint compasses. You gotta have empty maps in there, and then you can um, map your area out and so on and so forth. I'm not a big fan of the atlas, so I'm not going to be using it. But you know if that's something you feel you need to do then do it um, I'm not gonna say you're cheating one way or the other if you use journey map or anything like that some people might think it's cheating because it's not what the pack intended well I'm playing the game I want to play it the way I want to I don't see it as cheating to me using journey map is no different than, than pressing the F3 button here and looking at those coordinates and following it in that direction that you need to go so Let's do this. I'm going to come into journey map and I'm going to set a waypoint. Now I'm going to let's see, we don't need to see the natural gas. So let me turn that off and we're going to say new and I'm going to say map one. And the location of X is seven, six, two. Our Z is one one two eight and our y coordinates was sixty five. Okay, and we're just gonna hit save on there. So whatever direction map one is pointing at is where we're going to be going to. So it looks like it's off in this direction here over the other side of the hill. So now I've already grabbed a few things, as you saw in my inventory. I brought an extra bed. I brought a stack of dirt. If you follow Paul Source Jr., always carry dirt with you. I've got my yellow bag here. Let's open that up real quick. That is currently empty. Um, that is going to be for stuff we pick up. But uh, also in here in my um, this one, I, you see I've got these scoops in here. I made a couple of them. Um, I, I made some boats um, because, well, if you know anything about older versions of Minecraft, you know, you could bump into a, a lily pad with a boat and it'll break it. 
So I had to make a bunch of them. Um, but anyways, the scoops are to gather some um, beehives along the way. Since we're out adventuring, we may as well start gathering them because we're going to need that eventually. And we probably should start on that sooner than later because the bee quest is, is actually quite involved in this pack. So we've got food, we've got torches, we've got everything that we need. No, we don't. I want to get one more thing. Now let's come down here. And I hope this isn't the death of me, but I'm going to go ahead and get the um, Rod of the Skies. Take that with us so we can kind of hop up over mountains and stuff a little bit easier. And let's head on out. So it's about a thousand blocks away from us, supposedly. Let's take a look at journey map again. See, did it say anything? Waypoints. Oh, it's right there. 1,236 meters from where we're currently at. So let's head in this direction and let's see what we find along the way. I'm probably just going to skip over this unless we encounter anything interesting. But let's at least get over the mountain. And I hear a skeleton. Okay, there's one beehive. Let's go ahead and collect that real quick. Just like that. And let's head on off this way. Get our sword ready. There's another beehive. Let's go ahead and grab that when we're out. down this way and that looks like a pretty steep drop it might not be too bad continue on Gonna hit the coastline, I think. Pretty much so, yeah. Alright, let me go ahead and get down here and get the boat out. So let me uh, continue the, on my quest here and I'll be right back with you if we come across anything interesting or when we get to our destination. All right, it looks like we've encountered a hobgoblin hut. We'll head over that way real quick. Let me go ahead and grab this beehive while we're out here. All right take a look at this real quick now hobgoblins are passive they won't hurt you and in fact we are going to have to be dealing with some in, in a little while um, got another node here and he seems to be in his house so let me just go ahead and do this real quick I'm gonna put the bed down here and then let's sleep real quick so we can, don't have to deal with any monsters. And 
There we go. And there's our hobgoblin there. And they're just, again, they're just passive creatures that don't really do much of anything. So we can come in here. If you run into one of these when you first start off, look, you got a free cauldron. You got free wood that you can be using. Um, so, and that's good if, if you need it. Come over here and grab this beehive real quick. And then let's just uh, continue on our journey. Leave this guy alone. Okay, so this is the spot on the map, but there's nothing here. Let's take a look at the quest book real quick. Okay, now well, we got visited on there, so let's go ahead and claim our reward on it. I think there's supposed to be some type of a building or something here, and maybe... We needed to actually reopen the map and do that. So, tell you what, I'm going to head back to my base. I'm going to get another map. And then we're going to, well, no, I don't think there'll be anything here because we've already visited it. So, uh, yeah, that's that. There's nothing fascinating here. Um, but sometimes you find uh, old ruins and things like that. So let me run around this area a little bit and then I'm gonna head back to our base and I'll be right back with you. All right, I must have walked right past this. This is a witch's circle and there is, that's coven witch and that's a bad witch. Okay, now there is a spawner in here that we can um, pick up. There it is. And I believe that's a witch spawner. So we can actually, let's just go ahead and light it up. I don't think there's any more of them. Let's just check. Oh, there's one here too. It's showing a pig in there, which is usually kind of what the default is for these oddball ones uh, and then in the center here is a dispenser and let's take a look in there we've got some tin gears some bread a work cart I don't know what that is some coal and a torn page and we could talk to the witch over here I believe <laughs> they do not interest me okay why do you waste my time okay well, we know that she's here, so let's just go ahead and mark this on our map. Journey map, uh, mark the waypoint, and this is uh, new, this is Witch's Circle. Let me do it in Witch's Circle. Save it, because we're gonna have to uh, try to get ourselves a coven at some point um, this is a good place to start since we've got her here I don't know if she's always going to be here but uh, so touch pick up the web let's try this real quick I'm just curious it might not Nah. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, sleep real quick and then head back to the base. Alright, so we're back from our uh, little quest there. It was kind of a letdown in my opinion. There was nothing there. 
I think the issue is that I needed to actually open the map first before heading off in that direction. Um, and, and it just, the item never generated. So we'll try that with the other two when we eventually do those. Uh, but for the time being, let's take a quick look at what we brought back with us. You know, we killed the witch, so we got some sticks. No big deal there. Uh, we got the tin bushings and this work cart, whatever that's used for, and railcraft, some coal. Um, nothing huge out of the out of the um, the uh, witch's circle, but we know it's there, and I'm going to need it at some point once we get back into witchery again. Um, as far as um, the bee stuff, we got quite a bit. Now, um, we've got all these um, modest, oh, we've got a valiant princess, different modest princesses. We've got some parched comb. I've got some honeycomb, regular honeycomb. I did find one meadows hive, but everything else were like these um, parched hives or whatever they're called. Um, so we got enough stock, I think, to get us started in the bees. Uh, now, I am no expert when it comes to that whole thing um, so I, I really uh, <laughs> I know it's there's a lot to it uh, these were the ones that we found in in the area there when we were clearing out both down here and in our um, uh, Batania area uh, those were the um, rocky ones that we found buried in the ground you go ahead and toss those into our pack too just to keep all our bees together for the time being. All right, well, that's it for this episode. Um, we'll have to see what we can come up with for the next one. I think we're gonna have to uh, go ahead and get that uh, thermal evaporation unit set up. I might do that between episodes just to save a little bit of time and then show you how it works. I do need to uh, figure out whether it actually needs the, uh, the uh, solar generators or not. I don't think it does because we got that other piece but uh, we'll have to see. And if, if we do have to make thermal generators, that's going to be quite a bit more crafting involved with that. So until next time, this is Desert Rat. Have a good one. Goodbye.